pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Dr. Ali uh, Hussein Abdullah. Uh, Dr. Abdullah is one of the one of a handful of uh, Kuwait physicists. Uh, he is, uh, and it's a privilege to have him today with us. Uh, he is uh, an assistant professor of physics at the Public Authority for uh, Applied uh, Education and Training. Uh, where he has been teaching for the past 30 years. Uh, Dr. Atallah has received his PhD from King's College London in 1993 and in the area of infrared spectroscopy, that's this, one of the research areas in physics. Uh, Dr. Atallah's research interests are in uh, general science and especially uh, physics. And over the past two decades, he was particularly focusing on the area of cosmology and the link between uh, science and the Quran. In today's talk, Dr. Abdullah will present how the invention of the telescope has influenced and uh, changed the way we think about the universe. Dr. Abdullah, Please welcome, and please welcome. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, 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 wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, thank you very much for the introduction. And my talk today, first of all, secondly, I have to Say thank you for the organizer and the, the college for this invitation. My talk will be about telescope and how this telescope was affecting our view as a human to the universe. And I chose the title of the telescope and the three great <coughs> leaps. Of course, first of all, thank you for the college. The plan of the talk is an introduction and what we want to know, history of the telescope and the development, Galileo, Hubble, Hubble and their discoveries, where is our location in this vast universe, why we are here, where we are going. To. Of course, without any telescope, the only detector we have is our eyes. And to have a an, an view about the universe, the only thing we can do is using our imagination and our eyes. In the history, human beings tried to figure out how the universe is, what the shape of the universe is. Of course, if we were in that period, using common sense, you will have this picture. It's a flat earth and a sky with clouds, sun, and at night you will see just blinking light, we call it a star. Nothing more than that. And this is a paint very well known, explaining how people think of the universe. And this man is trying to find what is behind all of this. And we are trying to know. All the human beings are trying to know what is behind all of this. Historically, I will go back to ancient Greek. And they started by saying that Earth is the center. Of course, not all of them, but the influential man who was Aristotle took this view that Earth is the center of the universe. Aristotle was in this period of time, and he put two views for the universe. First, Earth is the center of the universe. Of course, he has his logic to prove this. 
and the universe is eternal. The way which means that Earth is the center, that we have every planet going around the Earth, and the last layer is spheres of stars. The problem is now that Roman Catholic accepted this view that the Earth is the center of the universe, but based on their view of from religious view point of view, not from Aristotle, but based on Aristotle, because they explain that okay, human being is very important, and Jesus was there, so they insist, or they have explained that Earth is the center of the cause of this. Then we have had the Copernicus Revolution with his book, which was forbidden for a long time. It was the other view that Earth is not the center of the universe, but the Sun is the, Earth, uh, the center of the universe. Of course, we know that this is against the Church, and anybody who was against the Church was in trouble. So the heliocentric system, the heliocentric model, which means that the Sun is the center, not the Earth. So this is the other picture that we have the sun, and every planet is going around that. So it is a Copernicus against church. Copernicus saying that the earth is the center, uh, the sun is the center, which means, according to some conclusion of other people, that human being is not an important thing. He is in one of the planets, not more than that. While church saying that we are in the center, we are important. Before the telescope, I told you that the only detector is the eye and the few tools that can be used to know the position of different objects. But what they are, we don't know. So we start with the history of telescope to take about 400 years journey from back to 400 years, almost 400 years. The earliest telescope where the refracting telescope, and everybody in science knows that refracting is that means that they are using lenses. And I will see now what does that mean. Of course, when telescope was invented, it was invented in 1608, 1608, not for the science, not for uh, astronomy, but for commercial reason, for military reason, they use that in military and commercial as the picture as the slide show. So we start with the first leap. It was Janini, this great scientist, which started using telescope not for military, not for commercial reason, but to discover to see how the universe is. So he directed his telescope to the sky, and then by this directing to the telescope and observing things, he was saying that, okay, Copernicus was right. So the center of the universe is sun, not the earth. Of course, it is not true that he invented the telescope, because he used the telescope one year later. It was the first telescope used in the, for the sky watching and observing was in 1609. Actually, it was January. Even somebody said the 10th of January, 1609, the first time to be used, watching the sky. Of course, he was a good designer of these telescopes, and he improved these telescopes, and he did very well. What did he do with the, this telescope to say that Sun is the uh, center of the solar system or the universe? He discovered four moons 
of planet Jupiter when he watched or observed the planet Jupiter with his telescope, he saw four little moons, and they call it Galilee moon, four moons, which means that these satellites are going around Jupiter, not the Earth. So not every object in the sky is going around the Earth. So this is the first step to prove that Everything is going around the earth is not true. And this is his drawing showing how these satellites were going around. The other thing, he watched Venus and saw that it is going phases like moon. And you can't explain these phases unless the sun was in the center, not the earth. So this is the picture slide which is showing the sun and the earth and the Venus is going round which proves that sun uh, the, sorry Venus is going round the sun not the earth of course again we will have trouble with the church and it was a long long trouble with the church because he was opposing this idea actually Galilee was a religious man. He was not against religion. Because I personally do not believe that there is a conflict between science and real religion. It is between science and myths explanation of the religion. This is the point. It happened. Actually, again, that Aristotle, uh, sorry, Galileo was trying to go against Galileo's idea, uh, Aristotle's idea. Of course, the argument against him was a long time and caused him many problems with the church. Telescope development. Now, we talked about refracting telescope. This is the maximum we can go with the refracting telescope, which means, again, that using lenses or but we have a great man, a great scientist called Isaac Newton, who invented other type of telescope, which was which we call reflecting telescope. The reflecting telescope, from the name, it means a mirror, not a lens. So now a complete different idea, but serving the same goal, which is using a reflected light to detect an object. Of course, he started with this telescope, as you see, and was very small, few inches, few centimeters in area, I mean the mirror area. But he couldn't find, it was very difficult to detect something, but the idea was right scientifically. Now, this is the difference between reflecting and refracting. A means refracting telescope. It is two lenses was used by Galileo. This is a refracting telescope. Of course, he never used reflecting telescope. It was always the refracting telescope. B and C are different designs for the reflecting telescope. What is the advantage of using reflecting telescope? That you can go further and further and expand and develop. You can get more area of the mirror it is easier technologically than using bigger and bigger lenses. Now we are going to Herschel. Herschel, after all these years, started to build a new telescope, which again, of course, not from now on, this is all, always a reflecting telescope. By 1.3 diameter, and this if you can see the arrow, it shows how this is big, telescope means. But here again, it was in 1789, but he, because when you have a bigger telescope, means a deeper in the universe, a clear picture, more and more. You discover objects that you've never seen before. So he saw, or he observed, 
about 1,000 nuclear. You know, a complete change of view of the universe. It is not stars and planets or comets. We have 1,000 nuclear. This big telescope, they saw it is a spiral nebula. Nebula means gas, like a cloud gas, shining by reflection or by any, any other method, but it is a collection of gas clouds. Then he started to say, okay, I will sh try to map the whole universe. So he started collecting lights from different directions or the stars to draw what is the shape of the universe, how, what universe we are looking, living in. Again, back to the center, he put the sun in the center. Human beings not like to be the center of this. So the universe, according to Herschel, is this is the shape of the universe according to him, according to his equipment those days. But the real picture is, part of it is the other one. Yeah. Now I'll just talk, talk about types of telescopes after all this development. We have not only optical telescope, which was talking before, we have radio telescope, X-ray telescope, gamma ray telescope, high energy particle, and other types. What does that mean? That we are not going to use only optical light. We can use infrared, and we have infrared detector. We have we use UV ultraviolet. We will have ultraviolet detector, and every one of these telescopes is like window. You can see through it different objects. The same object with different views. This is a telescope and the electromagnetic spectrum. You can see how range is very wide, starting from gamma ray, which is the shortest wave length, to the radio wave, which is the longest wave length. And everyone said, in some, for something we have to find through. We can't use gamma ray to see something that we can use the, the radio telescope. So this is the radio telescope. It has different <coughs> arrangement. It's not relying on light. You can use it at night, at daytime, because relying on detector radio wave. This is an X-ray telescope. This is a gamma ray telescope. You see that it is different design according to the wave. Then there was another job, which is the space telescope. It's not the ground telescope. We have the space telescope, and these are four different sections. Now we go to the second lead. What happened to the second lead? Here, the deep the sky. The question is, was the universe, according to Herschel, he drew one galaxy? The question is now, is the Milky Way the whole universe? So there was a big debate, and people are thinking, is the whole universe the Milky Way? or there is another galaxy. So telescope have this shape again. The great debate get to 1920. The astronomer had the great debate, was the Milky Way the whole universe or not? The great debate was between two scientists, Shapley and Herb Cruz. One of them said that the whole universe is the galaxy. The other one is saying, of course, he, on the debate, he, everyone shows his evidence. But who will go to finish this debate, solve this debate? It was Hubble, who worked 25 years with the telescope, and he proved that the universe is not only Milky Way, there is another galaxy. Of course, he started with the nearest one, 
which we call Andromeda Galaxy. This was in 1923. Edward Hubble proved that Andromeda is another galaxy, which is, this is Andromeda. It is a little bit bigger than our galaxy. It is distance about 2 million and 2.2 million light years from us. And it is a separate galaxy, which means that the universe is not the whole Milky Way. Milky Way is one galaxy, Andromeda is another galaxy. Of course, this will open the way to all researchers working in this field to find is there any other galaxy or not. They started this during from 1923 till now. It's going on. And now we have this Hubble Deep Field. It took us, it took people working in this about 10 days to concentrate in a very small point, very dark point. And they find that there is so many galaxies that it's about millions and millions of galaxies, which shows finally that the universe is about 100 billion galaxy. So Milky Way is one part, very small, minute part of that universe. Then they said, okay, these are not randomly distributed, but they are in groups. They call it local group, which means our group, which we are there. So our group contains the Milky Way, the Magellanic Clouds, the dwarf galaxies, the M31, which is the Andromeda, and so on. So it's about 12 or 14 galaxies, which is our local group. Then there's a coma cluster, another cluster, which contains so many galaxies. They call it part of local supercluster. Now we are going to take the clusters all together and get them in one paragraph, one piece or one group. We call it super cluster. So this is local super cluster, and we call it local because we are there. Then they saw that the clusters are divided into two divisions. Rich cluster of galaxies, poor cluster of galaxies. We say they say rich, rich cluster of galaxies, more, it is thousands of galaxies. While poor cluster of galaxies, galaxies is just few galaxies. Then there was a Sloan survey. This shows a survey for one million galaxies, how they are distributed. It was a project, one of the projects. This is a three-dimension picture of how galaxies are distributed. Of course, in the middle, we are watching the sky. If you, if you watch like this, it will be like a witch. If I turn my eye to the, the other side, I will have the other witch. That's why you have two witches going. We go deeper, it will be fainter, and we will get so every point here means a galaxy. So it is a very big difference, the view of the universe from now back to 200 years ago. Now the third leap, which is discovery of the century, which is very, very important, changed the view of the universe completely. What's that? The universe is expanding. Of course, it was started by Einstein, by relativity, in 1916, when he published his general relativity, and he solved the equations to prove that the universe is not static. It is not static means that it's either contraction or expanding. Otherwise, the, the equations will not fit. So this is a big shock for everybody, for everybody working in science, that the first time that we have something called 
the universe is not stable, not static. Which means that expanding, even Einstein himself didn't agree with his equation, tried to modify it, but he was a big mistake for him. Others tried to solve the equation and proved that no, the universe is expanding. This was theoretically, but how to prove it by observation? This was the word of, again, the telescope. And the expansion, from the expansion of the universe, we get the Big Bang Theory, which was established. Why was it established by the expansion? Because, logically, if it is expanding now, it means that the, the next year will be bigger and bigger and bigger, the last year will be smaller, 10 million years will be smaller, and so, till we get back to a point which was expanding, or uh, happened an explosion, whatever they call it, but it was something happening that the universe was made. Now this is a picture of the universe as it's seen nowadays, starting from dawn, which we don't know, from that point, from that singularity, from that unknown point, then we get a tiny fraction of second, there was something, then we get 300,000 years, there is the background radiation, we call it CMB, cosmic microwave radiation. The most distant light will go here, and then we have the universe as it is, after 13.7 billion years. So this means that the age of the universe is 13.7 billion years. Science scientists do not guess how the universe evolved. They can watch it, watch its history, the history of the universe going through telescope. Because telescope is time machine. You can use it, go deeper and deeper, you go back in time. You go deeper and deeper, you go back in time. That's the way it is. Now you can see that this telescope in the middle going to HDF, high deep field, then high ultra deep field, but we can't go further than this. You can, you can see the Big Bang is there. So starting from now, which is 13.7, going back to 1, then 0.7 to 0.4, back, back, till we get to the Big Bang. Gal uh, telescopes can go through to the Hubble Space Telescope, which is here, shown, is going to HDF, which is Hubble Ultra Deep Field. Now, this telescope in time machine is more, much more clear than here. Now we are seeing that different wavelengths have different function. Hubble Space Telescope can't go more than this. GWST, which will be maybe two, two, three years from now, they will have it to be replaced instead of the Hubble telescope. It can go deeper. And the W map, which was used to detect the cosmic microwave detection, can go till where I put the arrow, the arrow. But we cannot go further. Whatever the telescope was, we cannot exceed that. <coughs> I think I hope this will explain why we cannot ex exceed that. A Big Bang happened here. We have particles, everything, quarks, whatever it is. Then we have the most distant light that we can go. So this is a barrier. This is an opaque thing that we can't exceed. Whatever microwave, gamma rays, whatever light wave we can use, no electromagnetic wave can penetrate this one. You can imagine <coughs> seeing the sun, and you want to see behind the sun. You never can do that, because it's like a plasma. This plasma prevents any light going through from this side or that side. So you will never know 
what is behind this. But scientists want to know. We humans want to know what is there. Now come CERN, as you heard about CERN. That they are trying <coughs> to create the Big Bang. Why? Because if they create it here, or here, or anywhere, they will know what happened to the matter here. So they, they will get the two figures together, and they get a very clear view from the Big Bang till now. This is their experiment. It's a long distance for the particles to move in a circle. This is the tubes with the two particles going on. The collision happened in a detector, and they study what is going on according to this collision and the energy and time and so on. Studying collisions means that we will go back to the conditions where matter was after the Big Bang. Of course, to the Big Bang itself, never. But before that, we can. And here, before means what? One second, or 10 to the minus one second, or one millisecond, and so on. It depends on the energy of the particles and the equipment. This was the three leaves for the telescope. Now what is the future? The future leaps, do we think that we will have another leap? Who knows? It depends on the development and improvement of the telescope and the equipment available and the detectors. So, because not the telescope only, we have to have better computer, better detector, better technology. These are the future greater observatory, LSST, and so on. All of them trying to find what is the universe consisted of, how it began, where do we, where are the, how are the distribution of matter is. Because as we know, we discovered that, I mean, scientists discovered that it is not the only matter, the visible matter that we know. It happened to be that the matter, what we know that all these atoms, just it is 5% of the universe. The rest, which is 95%, nobody knows. They divide it into, it into two parts. They call it dark matter and dark energy. Dark matter is 25%. 70% is dark energy but they call it dark because they don't know what it is. And the research is going on to find what is dark matter, what is dark energy. After all, all these thousands of years of research, human beings know 5% of the universe. This is the future telescope. It is a 100 meter mirror. It's overwhelming large telescope, OWL. 100 meter telescope. What do you think that we will discover in using this telescope? They are planning to find just a comparison that Hubble Space Telescope is showing this galaxy. Why that why? This one? This is the Hubble Space Telescope, the recent, the most technology one. While if we use OWL, it will show this, which is much more here than that. What might we study with OWL? Examples, exploding stars, and look back time to about 12 billion years. More detail of the Big Bang, discovering Earth-like planet up to about 75 light years by direct imaging. And this is a cartoon which talks about what other people will discover. Now, finally, we will ask where we are, why we are here. 
where we are going to. Sorry. Where we are, the arrow shows where we are. We are the solar system. Solar system is part of the galaxy. Galaxy is part of the universe. Vast universe. Nobody knows where we are. This is just a relative. This is the Earth at seven, at 6,700 million kilometers. This is a real picture, a real photo of the Earth, where all the body, everyone is fighting and killing each other for this Earth, and this Earth, for this short time. All the civilization, all the history of human being was here, on this very small spot in this universe. And we are part, very small part of this. Again, what we want to know. This is the question. The problem is that science cannot answer these questions. If you care, then look for the right source to find the answer. Thank you for Thank you so much for the nice, uh, informative, beautiful lecture. Uh, I would like the uh, audience to have questions to uh, uh, just raise your hand and uh, I'd like to come to you. Future the telescope, the one that goes uh, so that's 100 meters. When did they plan on uh, building these telescopes? Of course, the budget and the problem of budget postponed several times, but actually, exactly, maybe within 10 years or less. Uh, I have a more philosophical question. Uh, Alistair was saying that, uh, I mean, the, 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 the Earth is the center of the universe, he was wrong. And then in 1920s, people were saying that uh, there was only one galaxy, they were wrong. Now we are a scientist talking about facts. I mean, how sure we are about these facts? I, I hope I could, yeah, I mean. In physics and cosmology, no 100% accurate, I think. But with improvement of equations, mathematics, computers, observatory, you will be approaching better and better. When you have better resolution, you know better. As an example, you will have a lens to see your, your hand, for example. You will see spots. <laughs> but if you have better microscope, you will see that the spots contain living cells. Living cells, for example. And if you have better and better, you will see inside the cell, and so on. So this is the, I mean, this is the science, how it goes on. Myself, yes. I rely on Quran actually. This is the best for me. 
often everybody judge for himself, but I, I myself rely on Quran because I know 100% that it is not a usual book or written book by a human being. So this will give me an answer because the one who's talking is the one who's created the whole universe. This is the Bible. So whatever he is saying, as if you are, you have two eyes seeing the materialistic world and the non-materialistic world. So you can't judge better than just one man watching the materialistic world. This type of telescope is difficult to say in general. It depends on what you want to use it. If you want to just detect a galaxy, just like a point, you need a very, not very large mirror. You want it to be very high resolution, concentrating on one part. But if you want to have details of a galaxy, you want a big telescope, if you want to know the temperature of a star, for example, you need a gamma ray telescope, and so on. It depends on the use and the thing that you know. I, I was wondering, uh, where is the cutting edge uh, technology that being developed today for telescopes and uh, space, uh, this kind of space research? Can you elaborate what is the cutting yeah. edge? The latest, let's say, uh, which the are latest? the biggest centers for, for the development of this kind of technology, for telescopes, for example? Is it the US or Japan or...? It's a collaboration, actually. Ah, okay. You can't say that this is the area, because, for example, lenses and mirrors are made in Germany, and electronics are in Japan, Americans are so-and-so. So it is not... Sometimes they, they can't use it just in one... But if it is a big project, the collaboration, You can imagine expansion of the universe. They, they, they put this like a balloon and you have a point. Like just put some seed, small seed on a balloon and blow this balloon. The seeds will go far away from each other. Yeah. But the seed itself is not changing. Okay. The distance between the galaxies, which is the space itself, is expanding. But the galaxies themselves are the same. So they're just moving, just moving away from each other. We are, you can say that space is created every second. Now, for example, for example, just to think that we moved during this ramani, one hour about, about one million kilometers in space, we moved. One million kilometers. Sorry? Is there a limit or just... Um, limit? This is a difficult question. Where we are going, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? It depends on, on so many things. Huh? Are there any other galaxies? Any other galaxies? I, I told you, it's a hundred billion galaxies. How do Estimated, huh? How, how, how do you know that? Okay, concentrate, for example, in this area. And we know there's ten galaxies here. So, for one meter square, there's ten galaxies. For the whole universe, for the whole circular area, it will be ten by four by us. So you can't calculate. Can you talk about the Is the shape a sphere or flat? The shape of the, shape of the universe? Nobody knows. We call it flat, but not flat like this. It is a flat in a four dimension. It's difficult to interpret or think of it. You showed us the four wedge. Yeah, two. Two one. This one that is. Yeah. So what's that indication that it's not sort of not uniform distribution? No, 
Well, no, this is the limit of the telescope. Oh, if you go this way, you can't see this. Half this, but this way, this and so on. Nothing. Nothing to do with the limit of the set. They're trying to create a Big Bang theory. A Big Bang condition. Do you think that the new uh, telescope, the, the, the OWL, will make a big difference compared to the telescope, to the, uh, the new model telescope in the meantime? Certainly. It will pave the way to find something that we cannot see now. Related? I'm saying that it is not no conflict between them according to my view. It's different for different people. Because when I go back to myself, just telling my idea, not the serious. My idea is that Quran is telling the truth certainly. But do not misinterpret the Quran. This is a, the problem here. I'll give you an example. And science it is a fact. You can observe, experiment, and so on. Just an example. When it says in the Quran that a shem's tentary, you must talk about that. For example, somebody will translate that how, how we can see this eye. It means that okay, sun is rising from east to west. Then science will come and say, no, earth is rotating. So um, here, there is a big conflict between science and Quran. No, it is not. You misunderstand the, the, the faith. Not the Quran. It's not the mistake of the Quran. You misunderstand it. And we know now that really sun is moving. Going in circular direct movement around the center of the galaxy. So when it says it's tetri, it's moving. Nothing is fixed in the universe at all. That's why we don't have in the Quran that Earth is the center of the universe. Never. We have one ayah completely explained everything. Kullum fi balakin Everything is moving. This is the truth. So it depends how you explain things. Yeah, and it's circular in the pedic. No, the reflect the fract in telescope stopped. Nobody used it. Just used for I mean small thing. But for the research, everything was right. Reflect reflecting mirror. One last question. Who is on? Uh, when students ask questions, it means that they understood the lecture. So uh, I think it was such a clear lecture that now we have so many questions from the students instead of the experts. So uh, I think again, uh, please join me in thanking the club. Ali again.